clocks, I mean. We'll tell you lots of wonderful things about General Electric Telecron clocks later. <laughs> General Electric Telecron Electric Clocks presents America's favorite family comedy, The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family. Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky, with Don DeFore as Thorny. What's wrong, David? You've hardly said a word all morning. Oh, it's nothing, Mom. Oh, now, something's bothering you. What is it? No, oh, it's nothing really, Mom. Oh, now, David. Uh, uh, Harriet, please. You say it's nothing. Is that right, Dave? That's right, Pop. Okay, if it's nothing, it's nothing. We'll just forget about it. Well, there is something, Pop. I kind of thought you'd like to tell us about it. But what seems to be the trouble, son? Oh, it's nothing. <laughs> Dave, uh, maybe we can help you work out your problem, but we can't do a thing unless you tell us what it is. Well, it's kind of silly, I guess. Sally Hughes invited me to this party Saturday night, and I told her I'd come. Well, that sounds very nice. Yeah, but our bowling team has this match against the Fidel Saturday night, so now I have to phone her up and tell her I can't make it. You think David's a dope, Pop? <laughs> Finish your breakfast, son. Uh... Well, uh, Dave, uh, what happened? Did you forget about the bowling match when you accepted Sally's invitation? No, sir. I remembered it. Oh, uh, uh, let me get this straight now. You remembered you had a date to bowl the Fidels, and yet you still accepted Sally's invitation to her party? Yes, sir. Now is David a dope, huh? <laughs> Ricky. And why did you accept, Dave? Well, gee, Mom, she just seemed so excited about the party and all, I didn't have the heart to disappoint her. Oh, well, yeah, I know how you felt, son, but you're going to have to tell her sometime, and now it'll be an even bigger disappointment. Your dad's right, Dave. See, when you have something embarrassing to tell somebody, uh, tell the truth right straight off. Or else it leads to a situation that's even more embarrassing. Are they going to have girls at this party? Well, naturally, a girl is giving the party. Okay, okay. I'm just trying to get the facts of the case. Well, that's another thing, Pop. I'd feel awful silly if I turned down the party and then the bowling match was called off. But do you think that's possible? They never call one off yet. Oh, Ricky, what do you know about it? Well, uh, do you think it may be called off, Dave? Well, I don't know. There's always a chance. Lots of things could happen. Like what? Oh, lots of things. Maybe the captain of the other team might get the measles. Well, that sounds to me like a pretty remote possibility. Maybe not, Pop. A couple weeks ago, we were supposed to take a geometry test, and our teacher got appendicitis. <laughs> just a rare coincidence. I think the safest thing for you to do, Dave, is just phone Sally and tell her the truth. Tell her exactly what happened. Maybe I could go to the party first and then go bowling. Oh, no, you couldn't leave a party that early. That wouldn't be very nice. Well, maybe I'll think it over. Well, you do just what you want, Dave, but you know the old proverb... Never put off until tomorrow what you can do today. Procrastination is the thief of time, Grandma Nelson always says. Oh. Are you going to say something? Yes, did you go downtown and pay the gas bill yesterday? You said you would. Oh, now, I'm glad you mentioned that, Harriet. You see, your mother has just illustrated the point I'm trying to make. She asked me to go down and pay the gas bill yesterday. So, instead of putting it off until tomorrow... I'm going to go down and pay it today. <laughs> Hello? Well, just a second. Mom, telephone. Who is it? Mrs. Jones. Oh, which Mrs. Jones? Which Mrs. Jones are you, Mrs. Jones? <laughs> You haven't forgotten you're having dinner with us tonight, have you? Oh, no, Pamela. I'm glad you called, though. I'm not sure I know how to get out to your house. Oh, well, that's why I phoned. Do you have a pencil? Uh, wait a minute. Okay, go ahead. Well, first of all, you come straight out Baldwin Boulevard and... Oh, now, wait till I get my directions straight. I can never remember east from west or north from south. Um, 
Now, when I'm facing the piano, the wing chair is east. You come toward the Davenport. That's north. <laughs> uh, north on Baldwin Boulevard until you get to the corner where Castle Road crosses. And when you get there, have your husband slow down. The shop on the corner has a hat in the window that's just perfect for you. You'll love it. <laughs> Good, I could use a new hat. Now, we go out Baldwin and turn its cute hat. Mm -hmm, that's right, you turn left, and you'll be on Castle Road, and then you turn... Oh, let me face the piano again. You turn to the wing chair, that's east. East on Castle to Oak Street, and you can't miss Oak Street. There's a long row of elm trees on both sides. <laughs> and as you make the turn, you'll notice a little dress shop on the corner. Should I have Ozzy slow down again? Oh, by all means, that little taft dress in the window there is out of this world. <laughs> you turn right. well, let's see if I've got this right now. Down Baldwin, turn left at the hat. And then down Castle and turn right at the top of the dress. Oh, wait a minute, Harriet. I'll give you those directions again. No, no, I'm sure I got them straight. But I just remembered. I moved all the furniture around yesterday. <laughs> Hi, Thorny. Hi, Osh. <laughs> Any sign of the bus yet? No, not yet. Plenty of buses, but all the wrong ones. I'll probably be along any minute. Well, hello there. How's the bowling champ? Oh, oh, for goodness sakes, look who's here. How have you been? Fine, thanks. You? Oh, you can't complain. Sure is nice to see you again. Thanks. Where have you been keeping yourself lately? Oh, you know, round. <laughs> so, uh, you two fellows know each other, don't you? No, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Oh, this is my neighbor, Mr. Thornberry. This is Mr. Esh -esh -esh. How do you do? <laughs> How are things going? Oh, just fine, thanks. Uh, How are things with you? Oh, oh, just fine. Have you seen any of the old gang lately? What old gang is that? <laughs> oh, you know... Uh, oh, you mean the uh, boys downtown? The, the, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see them once in a while. <laughs> I uh, ran into Dick the other day. Oh, swell. Who is he? Uh, 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 how, uh, how is he? Oh, he's doing fine. He says he sees Tom occasionally. Oh. Nice. Other than that, nothing new? No, no, no. Same old crime. <laughs> oh, how's the missus? Oh, she's fine, thanks. My wife's fine. Oh. <laughs> See, you know, you never did come over for that fried chicken dinner. Well, uh, you never invited us. <laughs> I didn't? Well, we'll remedy that right now. How about tonight? Oh, uh, no, not, not so soon. I want to give your wife a little chance to prepare. Oh, nonsense. We have plenty of food. The wife loves to cook. Well, I... I, no, I no excuses. Should we say about uh, 7 o'clock? Oh, well, why don't we make it some other night? Oh, nonsense. <laughs> There's my bus. We'll see you about seven. Oh, so, uh, just uh, uh, to be honest with you, I, I, I can't seem to remember uh, uh, your address. Where are you living now? Same old place. We're in the phone book. <laughs> well, Oz, it looks like you're invited out to dinner tonight. Seems like a nice fellow, too. <laughs> Thorny, I know you won't believe this, but I can't seem to place the guy. His face is so darn familiar, but, but I can't remember his name. Now, wait a minute. How can that be? You were carrying on such a brilliant conversation with him. <laughs> the thing. He mentioned something about bowling, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he did. But he also called you champ, so I'm sure he's never seen you bowl. <laughs> I hope Harriet remembers him. Uh, she probably will. She's got a wonderful memory for names, thank goodness. Well, if that's all you're worried about, I know his name. Why didn't you tell me? Well, you didn't ask me. <laughs> was the silliest thing. I was beginning to worry there for a minute. Wait a minute. How did you know his name? You told me. I told you? Sure. You said very distinctly, Mr. Thornberry, meet Mr. Rush. <laughs> oh, hello, dear. You're home early. Yeah. Well, I've got news for you. We're invited out to dinner tonight. Well, good for you. I didn't think you'd remember. As a matter of fact, I don't think I told you about it. <laughs> well, of course not. How could you tell me about it? I just found out about it myself about a half hour ago, and I was the one who accepted the invitation. Oh, you mean you met Pamela downtown? Pamela? Who's Pamela? Pamela Jones of the PTA. 
Well, I don't even know her. Well, of course you do. You met her at the Randolph's New Year's Eve party. Oh, it's funny. I, I don't remember it. Well, sure you do. Don't you remember the tall, beautiful, red-haired girl in the strapless evening gown? Oh, of course. <laughs> well, Pamela was sitting right next to her. <laughs> no wonder I don't remember it. Uh, how did she get into the conversation? Well, I just told you we're going over there for dinner tonight. She invited us about two weeks ago. Well, uh, uh, Harriet. <laughs> Harriet. Oh, I think we've got one of those little problems that make life so interesting. What did you do? Uh, well, uh, I accepted another invitation for us. For dinner tonight? Uh, uh, yes. Well, when was this? Well, uh, about a half an hour ago. Who was it? Well, you know, that fellow we know from the bowling club. Oh, what's his name? You don't know his name? <laughs> sure. Uh, that is, uh, I think I'd know it if I heard it. His face was very familiar. Well, now, let me get this straight. You accepted a dinner invitation for tonight, and you don't even know the man's name? Well, uh, frankly, Harriet, I was counting on you. You're always so good at remembering names. <laughs> what does he look like? Well, uh, he's about average height, uh, average weight, with a, a very pleasant average face. <laughs> that sound like anybody we know? Sounds like everybody we know. <laughs> Uh, from the, the bowling club. I'm sure of that because uh, he mentioned something about the, the bowling club. Uh, I know you know him, Harriet. Uh, frankly, you're kind of a disappointment to me. I, I was counting on you. You're always so good at that sort of thing. Well, I never go to your bowling club. Well, well, sure you do. Uh, you went there to the ladies' night, you know, the, the big tournament. What was that, a few weeks ago? That was the last Fourth of July. <laughs> well, I uh, thought it was Labor Day. Well, maybe you can think of it while I'm making the sandwiches. What sandwiches? The ones you always eat before we go out to dinner. <laughs> well, I don't think I'll have any tonight, thanks. Boy, what a mess. Here we are with two dinner invitations. One of them, we don't even know the names of the people. Are you sure you don't want the sandwiches? I have them practically made. Well, uh, no, thanks, Harry. I, I'm so worried I've completely lost my appetite. Uh, uh, what kind of sandwiches? Bacon and tomato on whole wheat with Thousand Island dressing. Oh. Well, uh, as long as you've gone to all that trouble, I may have a, a sandwich or two. Perhaps a glass of milk. Oh, God, I don't know why I can't think of this guy's name. His face is so darn familiar. Why in the world didn't you just tell the man you couldn't remember his name? There's no crime in that. Well, well, Harry, you can't do a thing like that. It hurt a person's feelings. It's like I was telling Day this morning. You've got to come right out and... <laughs> <laughs> Dave's is an entirely different case. <laughs> uh, come on, Harriet. I wish you'd help me. An average-looking man. About average height. About average weight with a, a kind of a, an average looking face. <laughs> These are General Electric clocks. Behind them lie a hundred centuries of a great search, the search to measure time. In the beginning, man marked his time by the stars and by the moving shadows of the sun the sands of the hourglass, the beat of the pendulum. Today, time moves with the pulse beat of electric power, the most dependable, most practical timekeeper man has ever known, accurate to the minute. And today, the leading electric clocks bear the name General Electric Telecron, keeping a nation on time, speeding a thousand flights a day, keeping the railroads on time, timing thousands of industries, Timing the programs you enjoy. And in millions of homes, too, you'll find General Electric Telecron clocks. Fashionable living room, sure working alarm clocks, bright gay styles for kitchens. General Electric Telecron clocks, whose makers this year produced their 100 millionth electric timing unit. Proof indeed that you're getting the best when you choose dependable GE Telecron clocks for your home. Mr. 
Mr. Nelson? Oh, hi, Susie. Are you worried about something? Oh, no, not especially. Simpson. Carson. My grandmother says when somebody talks to himself, it's a sign he's got money in the bank. Oh, well, that's not the case here. Wilkins. Either that or he's crazy. Oh, you're getting warmer. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a man's name. Hmm. Have you tried scratching your head? Well, yeah, I tried that. Made a lot of noise in my ears. I got grease all over my fingers. <laughs> in fact, I've tried every way I've ever heard of. I even stood on my head in the corner. That's supposed to help. Say, maybe you ought to go see a psychiatrist like they do in the movies. Hey, wait a minute. Those guys always work by association of ideas, don't they? I don't even know what that means. Well, they try and reconstruct the scene. You see now. I met this man in a bowling alley. I can only picture the bowling alley. I see it. I see the bowling alley. Now if I can see the man's face. His face. Yeah, I see it. Picture's face. His face. The bowling alley. The bowling alley. His face, 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 the bowling alley. Wait a minute, I think I've got it. His face, the bowling alley. His face, the bowling alley. What's his name? Al Bowling Face. <laughs> Dear, you haven't started to get dressed. Well, I wish you hadn't interrupted my train of thought just then. I had this guy's name right on the tip of my tongue. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I thought you'd given up on that. Oh, no, I can't give up now. Uh, Susie reminded me of something I'm working on right now. The Association of Ideas. Oh, well, that's fine, dear. But we promised to be at Pamela's at 7 o'clock. Well, you know, wait a minute, Harriet. Uh, I get dressed quickly. Uh, just sit down for a second and help me work this out, will you, please? Well, just for a second. Uh, now, I know this much. I know the man has a very ordinary, average name. Well, why do you say that? Well, because if it were an unusual, difficult name, I'd concentrate on it and remember it by association of ideas. Well, I don't think I'd count on that too much. Well, you know, it's true. Now, you take George Trout down the block. Trout's a pretty unusual name, but it's easy to remember by the process of association. All you have to do is think of fish, and you got it. See, whenever I see George, I immediately think of Fish, and right away I remember his name. Ozzie, I was there the day you said, hello, Mr. Mackerel. <laughs> I don't remember any such thing. Well, I'm trying to think of a man's name. The least you can do is help me. Well, I don't see how I can be of any help. You haven't given me anything to go on. Well, it's not my fault. He just happens to be about average height and average weight. Sort of an average-looking fellow. Well, come on, dear. Start getting dressed. Maybe you'll think of it later. Well, it, it just seems so darn unfair. Somewhere in this town is an average man and his wife expecting us to dinner. You can picture the poor guy now, wondering what's happened to us. He looks over at his wife and shrugs his shoulders. Uh, she's a medium build, about average height. Does that help you any, my description of her? <laughs> well, how do you know what she looks like? Oh, well, it follows, doesn't it, that an average man with an average name should be married to an average girl? It's a shame. They sit there in their average little home. For their one and a half children. <laughs> one and a half. Sure, that's the average family, one and a half children. <laughs> Say, this might be a clue. He mentioned a couple of friends of his named Tom and Dick. What happened to Harry? <laughs> Say, uh, maybe he's Harry. Uh, no, 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 no. Come on, don't be silly. Come on, get dressed. Hey, Pop, did you hear the good news? Oh, uh, what good news? I can go to the party. But what about your bowling match? It's been called off. Now, wait a minute. Don't tell me the captain of the other team got the measles. Yeah, wasn't that swell of him? <laughs> well, how about that? Well, come on, dear. We don't want to be late. Hey. Do you suppose that's what's his name? Well, I hope it is. Then you can just explain that we had a previous engagement and make it some other time. Oh, but gee, they probably have dinner already. And I'll have to tell the man I, I couldn't remember his name. Oh, that's too embarrassing. Well, embarrassing or not, it's the only fair thing to do. Yeah, I guess you're right. Sometimes you just have to face up to embarrassing situations. No sense being a coward about it. Go ahead, dear. Answer the phone. I'll get dressed. I will not. You answer it yourself. 
Gee, I've helped you out of situations like this many times. Hello? Hello? There's nobody on here. <laughs> I swore I heard the phone ring. <laughs> it's a dreadful thing. An average man and his average wife sitting, waiting somewhere. The average food growing cold on their average table. in the middle of the next block. Block. Blake. Black. Black. <laughs> Slow down now so you can get the number. Uber. Oh, right up here. Here we are. An average name, Smith, Brown. Don't forget their name now, it's Jones. Hey, please, I'm trying to think of an average name. You know Ozzy, don't you? Yes. How do you do? I'm sorry, I'm afraid we're a little late. Oh, no, you aren't. As a matter of fact, I phoned you to take your time, but I guess you'd already started. Uh, there's another couple coming for dinner, but they haven't shown up yet. Oh, anybody we know? No, I don't think so. Some friend of my husband's, the man he met at the bowling club. A uh, 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 bowling club? I, I wonder if it's anybody I know. Oh, now, this is the ridiculous part. My husband doesn't even remember his name. All he knows about the man is that he's average height, average weight, and he has an average face. <laughs> <laughs> now, can you imagine anything so silly? <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact, I can. <laughs> hey, dear, Mr. Nelson. Jonesy. Nellie. Hello. <laughs> I was just telling Ozzy and Harriet a little story, Oliver. Oh, no, Oliver, say, that's a twist. <laughs> Over my old friend, I can't get my over old this. old pal Ozzy. <laughs> I wasn't sure you two knew each other. Well, of course we know each other. Why would they come for dinner tonight? Well, because I invited them. You invited them? Well, I invited Ozzy today. You invited them? Well, <laughs> uh, this is all very easily explained, uh, isn't it, Harriet? I don't know. Let's hear you do it. Uh, <laughs> well, see, uh, you invited us for dinner... And then when I found out that uh, uh, Oliver Jones, your husband, had invited us, uh, we found out that, was, uh, w boy, we laughed. <laughs> you mean Ozzy's the man whose name you couldn't remember? What's this? Now, why'd you have to give me away like that, Pam? All, all right, to tell you the truth, Ozzy, I couldn't remember your name. And it was so embarrassing, too, because you remembered my name so well. <laughs> Uh, even introduced me to your neighbor, Mr. Rush, Rush, Rush. I wondered whether you recognized me. I recognized you, of course, but I, I just couldn't place the name. Oh. <laughs> Hope you weren't offended. Oh, no, of course not. Those things happen all the time. Some of us remember names, and uh, some of you don't. <laughs> oh, thanks. Here, let me take your coat. Poor Oliver, he's always forgetting people's names. I'll bet Ozzy never does that, does he? Oh, no, no. Ozzy has a wonderful memory. Uh, what was the name of that dress shop we saw coming over here? Uh, a uh, dress shop? Uh, Marshall's. Wasn't that the name? Oh, yes, Marshall's. And remember that dress in the window? You said you were going to buy it for me. Uh, I did? You should remember. I guess if I don't, I'd better. This is blackmail. <laughs> antelope bag. It was just made for that dress. Uh, yes, dear. I remember saying you could have that, too. I put your coat out here, Harriet. Oh, thanks, Pam. Can I help you? Sure, if you want to. Your uh, wife is very attractive, Ozzie. Oh, well, thank you very much. Did she come yes. from around here originally? Uh, no. She comes from a very well-known Midwestern family. You've probably heard of them. 
The James boys, Jesse James and his brother Frank. <laughs> You know, I feel that anybody who uses a General Electric Telecron alarm clock like I do owes it to his friends to tell him about these clocks. After all, everybody wants to wake up for sure. Who wants to be like this guy? He's a heavy sleeper and he always gets up late because he's got an old-fashioned wind-up alarm. It doesn't ring long enough to wake him. He probably gets pretty mad about it. Well, that's the guy who needs a GE Telecron electric clock for sure. These alarms sound off for 45 minutes. They can get anyone up and on time, too. General Electric Telecron clocks can't ever run down, and they never need winding because they're electric. So they stay on time to the minute. They keep you on time, too. Remember, waking up for sure is important. Your job may depend on it. And by the way, the styles are beautiful, and so are the prices. You'd be surprised at how little they cost. Get one for yourself soon, and you'll wake up for sure every morning. Remember the name... General Electric Telecron. Aren't you ashamed of yourself telling all those fibs tonight? I only told that one little one. You told two. One about the dress and the one about the antelope bag. All those. I was figuring you'd bail me out on those. You see, if you really did buy me the dress and bag, then I was telling the truth retroactively. Is that the right word? <laughs> it seems to be doing the job. What fib did you have in mind? The one where I said you never forget names. Well, I don't usually. Oh, Ozzy. There's one girlfriend of mine you've known for five years. Part of the time you call her Judy and the rest of the time you call her Julie. Well, what is her name? Mary Peterson. <laughs> I just want to remind you to stay on time all the time and wake up for sure every morning. Never worry about winding the clock. Get electric clocks for your home. Get dependable General Electric Telecron electric clocks. Every day is a holiday with hot boys. I'm Happy Hot Point, here to remind you that next week your hot point dealer will bring you the Nelsons. Ozzy, Harriet, David, and Ricky. You ought to see the Hot Point all-electric kitchens. Yeah, and laundries, too, in colors. Your Hot Point dealer will be glad to show them to you. Believe me, every day's a holiday with Hot Point. King Donovan was seen as Oliver. Barbara Eiler played the part of Pamela. Diane Jurgens was Susie. This is Vern Smith speaking. This has been an ABC Television Network presentation.